Now then imagine it's 1943 in wartime Britain, of course, and a young girl helps raise the princely sum of two pounds for the Red Cross through a jumble sale. To her amazement, she sent a personal letter of thanks from none other than the Prime Minister's wife, Clementine Churchill. That girl was Barbara Taylor Bradford, now one of the world's best-selling novelists of all time, and she's with me now. Very good to see you, Barbara. Nice Tell me more about this story and, and this wonderful letter. So you were a, you're a very young girl, you were in wartime Britain, you decided to do your bit. I did, and the thing was, my grandmother, Taylor, absolutely adored Winston Churchill and my father was born in 1900 and she called him Winston because it was just after the Boer War, you know, and Winston was in yeah. the news. So there were two Winstons in our house, my father and Churchill. And I was sort of, without knowing it, absorbing all this. And I said to my mother, I'd like to do something. And she looked at me and said, what? I said, well, I could have a jumble sale. So my aunts gave me all sorts of stuff and then sort of came back and bought it back. And I did raise two pounds and my mother bought a postal order. We sent it to 10 Downing Street and nobody was more surprised than I was to get this letter. And it, I've, I, my mother kept it all these years. And there it is. There, we've got to look at it. So it's on, it's on both sides. You, you said yes. you've, you've got it framed, 10 Downing Street. Whitehall, April 1943. Tell, tell me, what, what does it say? Tell me what, what it she says. It says, thank you very much for your gift, which I have just received. I am most grateful to you for the trouble you have taken to help the heroic Russians in their terrible but victorious struggle against the wicked invaders of their country. Your sincere friend, Clementine, S. Churchill. And, and I mean, and it's her role in, in the war, do you think a, a little bit overlooked? Because everyone focuses, of course, on, on the Prime Minister on Winston. Well, yes, and I know that from Celia Sands, her granddaughter, who told me quite a few things the other day. She's coming to Cambridge to for the presentation of the letter to them on Monday. There's a little ceremony there. And she You're said, donating it? Yes, I'm giving it to Churchill College because I have had it for years and a lot of Churchill girls have wanted me to give it to, oh, the place in America, you know, where he made the great speech. Um, a, a, an iron curtain has descended, ah, Fulton, yeah. Missouri. And I would never give this letter because I felt I needed to know where it should really be. And of course, I suddenly did realize when I met people from Churchill College that that's where it should be in England, in, Church, in Churchill's College, his archive. What do you think his view would have been? I mean, so much has been made during this, I don't know what you make of this EU referendum campaign, but so much has been made of how historical figures, which, which side they would have been on. And you mentioned that speech by Winston Churchill, of course, you mentioned you know, the, the awful wars that were going on, this whole idea that the, the EU in part has been, been set up to stop that kind of thing happening. I mean, what's your view on what Winston Churchill would have thought? Well, I think what he would have thought now is what he thought then, at the end of 1945, when the war was over. He wanted a united Europe because he wanted to prevent no more wars. He didn't want any more wars like the First World War was terrible too, and the Second World War was worse. And he thought if the countries were united that they wouldn't start invading each other and us. But I'm not sure that he would have approved of it becoming what it's become today, which is somewhat overpowering. We do get an awful lot of being told what to do from other countries. I think he might have resented that. But I remember Margaret Thatcher, and she said, we're a bunch of tribes. We all have different food, different language, different clothes, different culture. We're very different and we'll never be united. And that's why Margaret Thatcher didn't want to have a European... Certainly joined the, certainly joined the Euro anyway. I, I just got to ask you about the, the latest, not 31st, isn't it? Isn't, Winston yes. Churchill, of course, features in, in this, the, the Camden Luck. Yes. Um, I'll tell you what I thought, Dermot, when I was doing the research about the war. I was tremendously impressed with the, the total courage and indomitability of the ordinary people. The women at uh, the Women's Institute who made all that jam and bottled fruit and did all that. They fed the country. What about those... And the kids that held jumble sales. And the kids that... <laughs> yes. 
but also those men who went to Dunkirk, civilians like you and me, and they, well, women didn't go, and went to rescue the boys from the beaches. We were held together by Churchill, whose rhetoric and oratory has, has never been bettered by anybody. He was voted the greatest man of the 20th century, and I had said to my husband at the time, of any century. And he runs through the book, and I use a lot of his speeches, and they kept us going. They gave us hope. He, what he did was, I suppose he imbued people, everyday people, with the belief we could win. And that's an extraordinary thing. It's always a pleasure seeing you, Barbara. Thank you very much for you. your time today. Best of luck with our 31st novel. Best Thank of luck with that. Barbara Taylor Bradford there. Now, uh, just uh, a quick update on uh, the breaking...